Hey guys, good morning. Uh, take a look at our situation now on the uh, industrial fourth or fourth industrial revolution in Malaysia. Where exactly are we now? Uh, big companies in Malaysia might already be at the stage of IR 3.0 because uh, they have been using the internet uh, in their operations, for example. However, to be in the era of IR 4.0, these companies would need to adopt uh, technologies like IoT, blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence, or virtual reality. All the 10 technologies that have been defined in the industry forward, for example. So, uh, are we using that kind of technologies in our daily operations or work or daily life? So, what is disturbing is that uh, we have made a survey uh, with some of our industry friends. Uh, we found out that uh, most of the companies in Malaysia have not even adapting or embracing internet in their operations. Uh, most of the time, uh, uh, they're still at the era of 2.7 on average. Uh, you take a look at the small medium industries or the SMEs, especially uh, in the East Coast, uh, selling Kropok Leko. Uh, maybe some of you might have seen that we can order online but there's a lot of Kropok Leko uh, stores uh, yet to use the internet for example. So, technology is not the, actually the, the main problem uh, whether we like it or not, whether we design it in Malaysia or not this technology will uh, mature in other places around the world so it's a matter of time this technology will reach the shores of Malaysia. So the mindset of the people is the one that stops a lot of things. Uh, most of them don't have the courage to, to take that particular risk and jump uh, into this new transformation. So why we are saying that there is this gap between the older generation and the younger generation, the generation gap is one of the contribution factor to this. Uh, sluggish uh, market transformation, uh, sorry, not market, but mindset transformation in the in the country. So, for example, in the the, the younger generation who joins the company, uh, they are very tech and internet savvy, who are very keen to move forward. Uh, they, but some of the managerial level, uh, they, these are the people of the older generations are very reluctant to to spend their resources giving more opportunities uh, to take more risk. So because of this uh, old kind of mindset, uh, they feel you know they feel very comfortable with what they have at the moment and they don't want to change that. So, so what we need now is that uh, we need to change that. So we, we need to develop new new generations, new talent because we feel that uh, that we are three to five years behind uh, a lot of other countries who actually have been adapting uh, uh, IR 4.0. So we need to refresh the contents, the syllabus, the courses in the universities so that the younger generations that uh, <coughs> graduated from the universities will be more better equipped uh, to push the country forward, I would say. So, how to overcome the challenges? Uh, so there are several factors, uh, I would say, uh, maybe four factors. The first one is the talent. As I mentioned to you earlier that um, we are three to five years behind uh, compared to other countries such as South Korea, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, and so on and so forth. So the, the courses need to be refreshed. Secondly, about the mindset transformation, organizations that want to, must take that particular risk because uh, industrial revolution, the term is revolution, uh, it's not evolution. Revolution actually means a very sudden and dramatic change. We don't want to evolve slowly because that, that is the kind of what definition of evolution is. So uh, we, these people, you must find them a champion to, to, to change the, the, the organization or the whole ecosystem. And thirdly, uh, why not we, we take a look and leverage the strength of this younger generation uh, tech savvy? 
these are the people who are born with internet, you know, uh, even during the young age, they are very much exposed to the technology because that's the foundation of the, the IR 4.0. And the fourth one is about the regulatory. So we need a country that uh, also countries are looking at regulation that not only to take a look at the you know making the citizens safe by you know having uh, equipments or technologies which is safe for the citizens, but we also don't want to the country to stifle the innovation by allowing uh, new tax that comes in. Uh, I'm sure you know a lot of new startups which have new ideas uh, would love to test out their their solutions, uh, which really is you know haven't been used before. So uh, give them the opportunity, give them the chance to to prove themselves, and maybe one of the days that they will be you know uh, will be more receptive uh, about. Uh, the way that we do things. So IR 4.0 means that we are transforming not only the, the mindset but transforming the way that we uh, do things. So jobs might not be the same as what we are having now. Uh, it will be transformed. Uh, how can you imagine blockchain in your daily life? You know, making transactions uh, using blockchain for example. You know, working in an environment where uh, robots are together with you, so that's a very collaborative kind of environment. So uh, it is a challenge uh, because people are worried that they will lose jobs. People will lose jobs because they are lazy. So <laughs> might as well we uh, replace them with uh, you know artificial intelligence and robots. So these are some of the things that. Uh, uh, a lot of challenges that we are facing now and uh, hopefully we, we can move our our level of uh, <coughs> embracing industrial revolution from 2.7 to 4.0 so guys any questions that uh, you would like to ask thank you for watching uh, okay that's there's nothing, so I would like to thank you for watching this morning uh, in our uh, session. So I will, you know, uh, come back in the, maybe tomorrow for another uh, discussion about Industrial Revolution 4.0 or Internet of Things. Thank you. Bye.